And here's a happy memory. By breakfast, really even brunch, on Election Day 2016, virtually nobody in Washington, D.C. thought Donald Trump could win. And they didn't think that because the entire press corps had been telling them for months that Trump had, as they always put it, literally no chance, not even as an abstract theoretical matter. This wasn't actually a race. In fact, come November 8th, you'll remember this, Donald Trump was going to be drowned by a towering blue tsunami and swept away forever, along with the rest of the Republican Party, the collaborators anyway. And polling numbers seemed to confirm that this was going to happen. And so, by the way, did the private betting markets. At least one of those markets had set the spread at 80-20 for Hillary Clinton that morning. In the end, of course, they were only wrong. They were hilariously wrong. By midnight, Trump had won. And a lot of highly educated, extremely well-credentialed people suddenly looked ridiculous. Hillary Clinton herself was so shocked by the results that night that she refused to give a concession speech. She went to bed, hoping it was just a dream. Now, you probably remember all of that very well, but it was what happened next in the days between the election and Thanksgiving that it turns out, in a lot of ways, was much more important. What happened during that period set the course for where we are right now. And where we are right now is speeding toward one of the great disasters in our history. So the leaders of the Democratic Party couldn't, in effect, handle the outcome of the 2016 election. They snapped under the strain of it, under the crushed expectations. But rather than look inward and assess their own role in the disaster, what did we do wrong? Why did voters reject us? And other questions that emotionally mature adults might have asked. Democratic leaders instead immediately set out to find somebody else to blame for the election results. And soon they settled on Russia. Vladimir Putin got Donald Trump elected, they told us. Hillary Clinton said that repeatedly. Now, at first, it was hard to take any of it very seriously. We tried, but there was no evidence it was true at all. And so a rational person concluded the obvious. This was a childish psychological defense mechanism. It was not a factual claim. And yet they kept saying it in the face of no evidence. And over time, they began acting on it like it was true. And then even over more time, they paralyzed the entire federal government for years, fruitlessly trying to prove the core claims of Russiagate. But they never could because those claims weren't true. And yet, critically, they clung to those claims. They never stopped repeating the talking point. The Russian government, quote, hacked our election. That was Jen Psaki not long ago saying it out loud like it were true. Now, here's the context. As she said that, Psaki was trying to explain why the Biden administration is, in effect, working to overthrow the Russian government right now. And for once, Jen Psaki was telling the truth. That is why. Democrats have convinced themselves that Russia stole the presidency, which rightfully belonged to Hillary Clinton. And they mean it when they say it. And that's why they are taking us to war with Russia. Now, there are a lot of things going on here, a lot of threads, as in any big story, but on some level, the core motivation is just that simple. Here's what we know it's not. We know the war in Ukraine is not about saving democracy, please. We know it's not about protecting the sacred borders of a sovereign country. We know the Biden administration doesn't care about those principles because they run our country and we see how they act. And we know for dead certain, and this comes as sad news to a lot of Americans who are compassionate, but we know now that the war in Ukraine is certainly not about helping the Ukrainian people, those poor people. Many more Ukrainian civilians will die, certainly, thanks to the Biden administration's policies. If you wanted to save Ukraine, its people, its infrastructure, its nation, you would push for a settlement now. You would have done it two months ago, but they're not doing that. They've rejected it out of hand. So that's not their goal, saving Ukraine, saving human lives. No, that's not their goal. Instead, the war in Ukraine is designed to cause regime change in Moscow. They want to topple the Russian government. That would be payback for the 2016 election. So this is the logical, maybe the inevitable end stage of Russiagate. Now, we should have seen this coming because they said it out loud years ago. Here's Adam Schiff from two years ago predicting it, saying it. Watch this. As one witness put it during our impeachment inquiry, the United States aids Ukraine and her people so that we can fight Russia over there and we don't have to fight Russia here. So we arm Ukraine so we can fight Russia. Now, how many Americans, whatever you think of Putin, probably not much, justifiably, probably don't have a lot of interest in moving to Russia, but how many Americans then or now want to, quote, fight Russia? A very small group. But Adam Schiff said it out loud at the time in the House of Representatives. We don't arm Ukraine so we can help the Ukrainians. They're merely unfortunate pawns in all of this. We arm Ukraine so that we can punish Russia. Why? For stealing Hillary Clinton's coronation. 
If only we had taken Adam Schiff seriously as he said it again and again and again. But now we can't help but take Adam Schiff seriously because he's one of the prime movers of this war. Adam Schiff spent this weekend in Eastern Europe checking on the progress of the war he has done so much to bring about. He traveled there with Nancy Pelosi and a number of other of the most conspiracy-minded Democrats in Congress. These are the Russiagate true believers seeing their theory come to fruition. That's what this is. 